you have a Bible, you can open it up. We'll start in John 15. If you have a phone, you could go to the Bible app and look at it there. And here on Sundays, the last six weeks, we are in a sermon series on the Apostles' Creed. A creed is a statement of faith, and the Apostles' Creed is the simplest creed of the Christian faith written by the early church leaders about 1,700 years ago. And the Apostles' Creed is a part of the Waikiki Beach Gathering's statement of faith, meaning that everything that we teach and preach here at a church aligns with what the Apostles' Creed said. And the Apostles' Creed is not the Bible. It is a simple summary of what the Bible says. And the creed exists to show us the fundamentals of the Christian faith. So, As Christians, we can find lots of things to fight each other about and to disagree with theologically. Maybe baptism, communion, can women be pastors, eternal security. We all have a viewpoint on these heated topics. But what can we all agree on? The Apostles' Creed. The bare minimum essential belief of Christians can be summed up by the summary of the Bible in the Apostles' Creed. So the Apostles' Creed is the fundamentals of the Christian faith. Almost every single Christian church in the entire world agrees with this statement. So when we say the Apostles' Creed together, we are standing in agreement with Christians worldwide. And in the Apostles' Creed, we are saying, I believe. We are not saying, we believe. You are saying what you personally believe. So it's optional. If you believe it, you can say it. So as we start here, um, you guys can open um, up your online bulletin at wbg.church. And we're going to say the Apostles' Creed together. You can also Google Apostles' Creed. Or maybe you grew up going to church, you have it memorized in your head already. So we're going to say the Apostles' Creed together. So like two weeks ago, we talked about who is God the Father. Last week, we talked about who is Jesus. And today we're talking about who is Jesus the Holy Spirit, as Bethany just introed us on. So let's say the Apostles' Creed here together. You can Google Apostles' Creed, or maybe you have it memorized. Uh, Remember, this is is optional. You don't have to say it. So if you believe it, let's say it together. All right. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, let's pray. Dear God, the Father, dear Jesus, dear Holy Spirit, we thank you for who you are. God, we just ask that you to open up our hearts today, make these words in the Bible come to life. God, we ask that you'd somehow speak through me. Amen. All right. Luke, I am your father. A long time ago, in a galaxy far away, you don't know the power of the dark side. Patience, you must learn, young Padamon. What movie is this? Of course. George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars, grew up as a Christian. He probably said the Apostles' Creed like every single Sunday, you know. He grew up going to a Methodist church. And he said in creating the Star Wars saga, quote, I wanted to awaken a certain kind of spirituality. All I was trying to say in a very simple and straightforward way is that there is a God and there is a good side and a bad side, unquote. So Star Wars has religious roots. And possibly the most popular Star Wars quote quote of all time is, May the Force be with you. Did anyone celebrate May 4th this year? Anybody? Any diehard Star Wars fans? Okay, May 4th is May the Force be with you day. Star Wars describes the force. On StarWars.com, this is the definition of the, of the force. A mysterious energy field created by, created by life that binds the galaxy together. 
Harnessing the power of the Force gives the Jedi, the Sith, and others sensitive to the spiritual energy extraordinary abilities such as levitating objects, tricking minds, and seeing things before they happen. While the Force can grant users powerful abilities, it also directs their actions, and it has a will of its own, which both scholars and mystics have spent millennia seeking to understand. This sounds, in some ways, very similar to the Holy Spirit. In Star Wars, there tends to be a focus on using the Force, yeah? The, the coolest part of the Star Wars movies is when they do like a Jedi mind trick, and the clones are like about to kill them, like, and then they say like, we will leave now, and they just walk away. Or maybe when like some Jedi or Sith lifts their hand up, and then someone just gets lifted up in there, and they can even choke people if they want to without even touching them. Or maybe it's when they can see the future. They can use the Force. The whole focus is harnessing the power of the Force, using the Force. And we can forget that in Star Wars, the Force is also with them to lead them and guide them. And as Christians, we may view the Holy Spirit in the same way sometimes. We focus on harnessing the Holy Spirit Harnessing the power of the Holy Spirit. Using the power of the Holy Spirit. And we may forget that the Holy Spirit is also with us to lead us and guide us. We focus on the spiritual gifts. We focus on the fruits of the Spirit all the time. But we can often forget that the Spirit is also our comforter and our counselor. Today, we all need to know the Holy Spirit is not a force. He is a friend. The Holy Spirit is not a force. He is a friend, and he wants to get to know you. And often, often we define people by what they do, yeah? So Petey is the guy who grills. Mackenzie is the photographer. Micah is doing security today. Eddie is the piano player. We define people by what they do. We don't often define people by who they are. The Apostles' Creed simply says, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And today we're going to simply look at two simple qualities to define who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is not a force. He is a friend. This is shown in point number one. He has a personality. He has a personality. So, ladies, when you see a really cute guy at first glance, Or guys, when you see a really cute girl at first glance and you want to get to know them, a thought in your mind may be, man, I I really hope they have a personality. Because if they just look good, but their personality is eh, that's a no-go, like see you never, yeah? We don't have to worry about this with the Holy Spirit. He has a personality. He is a person. He is not a force. He is our friend. And oftentimes, here on Sundays, when people come to the gathering for the first time, oftentimes afterwards, people will tell me, dude, dude, I just really like the energy here. You guys have such positive vibes. I can feel it. What you guys doing here is awesome. This happens all the time. What they are feeling among us is the Holy Spirit, and part of our job in sharing God with these people is to redirect their focus from feeling it to feeling the power and the presence of the person of the Holy Spirit. Every time Jesus mentions the Holy Spirit in the Bible, he refers to the Holy Spirit as a he, not an it. The Holy Spirit's pronouns are he, him. You don't call a person it. You don't call an energy, a table, a chair, a he. For example, when Jesus says in John 15, 26, When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify about me. He. And the Holy Spirit is a person because the Holy Spirit has emotions. It's like like we have emotions. Ephesians 4, 30 and 31 say, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and slander must be removed from you along with all malice. This is saying when we do not love others, like loving Jesus, loving others, making disciples, when we do not love others, when we are angry, when we hold grudges, when we spread rumors about each other, 
it makes the Holy Spirit feel grief. When we sin against God, when we sin against the Holy Spirit, we make the Holy Spirit sad. The Holy Spirit is distressed. The Holy Spirit is a person because he has a will. All these verses I'm reading are in an online bulletin at wbg.church. You guys can follow along. 2 Corinthians 12.11 is talking about spiritual gifts. And the Bible says, But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually just as he wills. So the Holy Spirit decides which spiritual gifts you have. The Holy Spirit is thinking and makes a decision and has a will for you. The Holy Spirit is a person because he is our comforter. Throughout the book of John chapters 14 through 16, the Holy Spirit is referred to as a helper, which in the Greek means comforter or counselor. And John 14, 26 says, But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and remind you of all that I said. So those times when you're feeling sorrow, when you're feeling distress, when you're feeling all these emotions, you're feeling down, and you remember that Bible verse, that's the Holy Spirit who's bringing you comfort, helping you remember God's word. All right, and the Holy Spirit is a person because he wants to hang out with you. 2 Corinthians 13, 14 says, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You cannot have community. You cannot hang out with a table, a chair. Maybe, maybe surfboard is bay. Maybe video games. Maybe you can like an object. But like, you cannot have community with energy or things. You can have community with a person. You can have a relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And that brings us to our second point of two. The Holy Spirit is not the force. The Holy Spirit is a friend. And point two is he has deity. He has deity. He is God. The Holy Spirit is not just any old person. He's not your roommate. He's not the gas station clerk at 7-Eleven. He's not that TikTok influencer. He's not that governor candidate. He's not the weatherman. He's not your best friend from elementary school. He's not just any old person. The Holy Spirit is also God. He is God, meaning he has authority, meaning he deserves all of our honor, all of our worship, and all of our praise. And he's part of the Trinity. Our God is three in one, just like we sang. One God who exists in three distinct persons, all equal, all eternal. We call it the Trinity. Throughout the Bible, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are mentioned all three together, all throughout the entire Bible. For example, the Great Commission, where we get the, the make disciples part of our mission statement. Matthew 28, 19 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was not created. The Holy Spirit is also the creator. In the very first verses of the Bible, Genesis 1, 1 and 2, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The Holy Spirit has always existed and will always exist. And he has also created you. That's personal. And Job 33, 4 says, The Spirit of God has made me. The Holy Spirit has personally made you. And throughout the Bible, the Holy Spirit is referred to as the Spirit of God. And he also has tons of names. The Bible also refers to the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of Lord, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of the Father, the Spirit of Truth, the spirit of life, the eternal spirit, the spirit of the living God, the spirit of grace, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of glory, the spirit of justice, and the spirit of wisdom, and so many more the spirits of. And these all describe characteristics of God, showing us that the Holy Spirit is God. 
The Holy Spirit is also God because the Holy Spirit is everywhere. Psalm 139.7 says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. The Holy Spirit is God because he knows everything. 1 Corinthians 2.10 says, The Spirit searches all things, all things, even the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit is God because he convicts us of sin. When you feel sorry, convicted of your sin, that's the Holy Spirit being personal with you. John 16.8 says, And he, when he comes, will convict the world regarding sin and righteousness and judgment. And to sum it up, maybe two of the most clear Bible verses that the Holy Spirit is God are shown in 2 Corinthians 3.17 that says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Also, the story of Ananias and Sapphira in Acts 3.4 goes like this. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept yourself some of the money you received for the land. Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. The Holy Spirit is the one being lied to. God is the one being lied to. You cannot lie to an energy. You cannot lie to the gathering trailer. You lie to people, you lie to God. And these verses equate the Holy Spirit with God. Also, the Holy Spirit sanctifies us. He doesn't, he doesn't just convict us in sin. He also brings us up. He builds us up and helps us grow in our faith and our relationship with him. 1 Corinthians 6.11 says, But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. The Holy Spirit is God. And that's it. In conclusion, the Holy Spirit is not a force. The Holy Spirit is our friend. He has a personality. He has deity. The Holy Spirit is not something we use. The Holy Spirit uses us. We often focus on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We often focus on the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which are good things. But let's remember who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is God. He has emotions. He has a will. He is your comforter and he wants to get to know you. He is your creator. He knows everything and he is everywhere. He convicts you of sin and he doesn't just leave you there, he builds you up. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Don't you know, don't, do you know this? Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that the Spirit dwells in your midst? If you are a Christian, if you've surrendered your life to Jesus as your Savior from your sin, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And that is not just the Star Wars force. That's not just some good positive vibes. I know so many people with good positive vibes. What lives inside of you is the person and the God of the Holy Spirit. And he gives, he gives you for free of charge these gifts of the Holy Spirit. He gives you these characteristics, these fruits of the Holy Spirit for the purpose of loving Jesus loving others and making disciples. But also, let's remember, the Holy Spirit is your friend. He is always there for you. He never leaves you. He wants to hang out with you, and he wants to get to know you. So let's not forget the Holy Spirit. Let's embrace him, not just for what he does for us, but for who he is. If you liked one of your friends here just for what they do to you, that's pretty selfish, yeah? And we can often act that way with God. Let's not just love the Holy Spirit because of the spiritual gifts and the fruits of the Spirit. Let's love the Holy Spirit because He loves us. He is not just a force or energy. He is our friend. He is our God and He is a person. So this week, in your life, when we're not all together, when you're by yourself at work and with your friends, let's hang out with the Holy Spirit. If, 
If you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit is already with you. Welcome him into your conversation. Let's get to know him. Let's pray to him. Let's worship him. Let's follow him and let's allow him to lead and guide us in every decision that you guys have in your life because he is not a force. He is a friend. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for who you are. Dear Holy Spirit, we thank you for who you are. Dear God the Father, we thank you for who you are. God, we, just, we ask you to give us the ability to just love you for who you are, not for just what you do for us, but for who you are, God. God, we just ask that you'd help us. We just make, you, just make your presence so known to us. God, I pray you just ask that you'd help, just bring this love that you have for us, bring it to us for you. Help us to truly love you, God, through every single thing we do. Thank you, God. Amen.